Good afternoon. First of all, thanks so much for staying all day long with us. It's really a pleasure sharing more about machine learning. My name is Ais Coqueiro, and I'm responsible for the Solutions Architecture team here in AWS, helping customers from government, education, no-profit organization, and healthcare in their journey to the cloud. And today, I have the privilege of sharing the stage with Manu Sud. Manu is the, the manager of analytics team in the Ontario Ministry of Economic Development. And today, we'll show you how to use machine learning in order to improve your business. We'll show not only about technology, about some features that you have, but also show how you can use in your organization. And now to start, I'd like to start by the big picture. And the big picture in machine learning always starts by data. And data which comes from everywhere, Data which comes from an IoT device, for example, when you think about smart cities, device collecting all this information. But also data can come from the mobile. Think about citizen and the way that citizen can interact with the government. As well as cameras, think about CCTV recording things. And finally, can come from APIs, especially when they integrate different agents in different departments. When you have all this data, yes, you have a new challenge in terms of how to manipulate this data. But what customers has been told us is many times, it's not about technical part, it's about how to break the silos. Because it's very important to exchange information because when you exchange those information, we just start to find a lot of good insights. And those insights are key for the machine learning. Because what machine learning will help you is basically empower your business. What empower mean in this context? Sometimes machine learning can help you to do things that you have done before, but doing better, faster, or sometimes doing things that you have never done before. It's the two different directions that machine learning can help you. Let's put in action and see these concepts in a one example. Let's pretend for a second that our business goal here is how to play with Rubik's Cube. So the faster you do, the better. So when you think about Rubik's Cube, uh, maybe you can just apply your traditional way of development software, like the conditional statement, the famous if, then, else. If you do it to fix this problem, well, maybe it won't be the best case, because you have about 43 quintillion of unit combinations. Imagine an application with all those if then else, you'll be hard. So the proposal here is how to think this business problem in a different way. So in that case, instead of trying to predict all the possibilities, why not teach the computer to learn? It's a different mindset. But when you think about that, instead of thinking about code, the patterns, the idea is all about how to teach the computer to learn in order to do things. I know that sounds like uh, different. Let's see those things uh, working. So the first step is about building models. In the building models, you create what you call it a learning function. Basically, it's a code that you define the way that your computer, your application, you learn the patterns. And by the way, it's not that different when you think about humans. Because the way that you, le you learn it like chemistry, or learning English, or even how you learn jokes, are completely different. The computer is exactly the same. Different data, different business problem, you have different strategies to learn based on these problems. Using techniques like statistics model, or sometimes neural network, there's tons of ways to create this learning function. As soon as we have learning function, next point is data, because we need to ingest data in this learning function in order to produce what you call as a model. Model is a mathematical representation that you, you tell to the business or tell to the data the answer that you are looking for. These three blocks are the basic blocks to create any kind of machine learning solution. As soon as you build, you are able to go to the second step. The second step is training your model. Because when you have the data, you have your strategy of your learning, what you need just to ingest information for your computer, generalize the solution. The idea is not memorize 
all the possibilities, like if and else. It's all about how to learn the behaviors, and then after learning, bring the answers that your business is asking for. So how to do it? Put in data. When you put in data, uh, now I have two different combinations of Rubik's Cube. With two combinations, now I'd like to introduce you the new concept that you call as a confidence. Confidence, why? Because it's how confident you are that your model bring the right answers. As you can see here with this combination that I have now, I have 2% of accuracy, which in the most of the business that I know, it's absolutely useless. So what you need, you need more data. Data that help you to learn and getting better and better in terms of accuracy. And just to see how many times I spoke about data. Because machine learning without data, we are not going uh, further. At the point that you are able to go to the third stage and last stage, we call it about inference. Or basically, when you move your model to the production. When you move your model to production, now you are able to bring new combination of Rubik's Cube. Even if your model have never seen before this combination, and then bring the results. In this example here, I have about 95%. Is 95% good, bad? The answer is depends. Depends on your business. Because for some use cases, it's good enough. Others need to work on it, which means that if you need to improve for 95 to 99%, you can bring more data or try to create a new learning strategy to improve your business. Let's see those things in action, running, really. So I have a device here with a Rubik's Cube using the same concept that I told you before. The device, you have the data, we train the model. When you run this model, you have something like that. 0.9 seconds, it's done, it's real. It's machine learning, it's working. You see, just to have a sense, the, the, world, the world record is about 30 seconds, a guy from Korea. The most of guys, in my case, I sometimes take an hour. I'm not very productive on it, but depends. But you see, with the machine, you just bring your government organization to a different level. It's the idea of machine learning. But maybe you can challenge me saying like, hey, okay, but Rubik's Cube? It's not exactly a business problem. Let's see the same concept now in a real problem. And I'd like to bring you one solution from Babylon. Babylon is a company uh, based in the UK, and Dr. Ali is responsible for healthcare space, and they just developed a solution that provides a different, customer, different patient experience to need the patient. What you see is based in Alexa, our digital uh, voice assistant, like this one. Here, smaller. So what you see now is the conversation between the patient and the Alexa. And then we're able to see in the back, Alexa working in the back end to see how things work. Sound and let's start the conversation. Alexa, I want to talk to Babylon. Hi there, I'm Babylon and I'm here to help. To start, tell me what symptom is bothering you the most. Well, I've got quite a sore stomach. Sorry to hear that. Let's figure out what's causing your pain and how to treat it. Chris, where exactly is the pain? It's, it's kind of on the top part of my stomach, sort of in the middle. And how bad is the pain? Oh, it's not too bad. And does it come and go? Yeah, it comes and goes, and it's worse after eating. I see. How would you describe the pain? Sort of feels like a burning pain. Okay. And are you feeling sick? Yeah, a little bit. Have you vomited at all? No. Have you noticed you're feeling fuller sooner than usual? No. How long have you had this pain? A few months. Three months, maybe. Are you still a non-smoker? Yes. Okay, that's great. Have you been taking any of your ibuprofen tablets the last few days? Yeah, I have. Thanks. 
Chris, I know enough now to offer information on what may be causing your symptoms. It could be acid reflux or a peptic ulcer. I'd recommend speaking to a GP soon. They're likely to prescribe something called a proton pump inhibitor to control your stomach acid. I can then get this prescription to your home using your Amazon Prime. Okay, thanks Babylon. My pleasure. Thanks for using Babylon with Alexa. Goodbye. Thank you guys. It's real. It's not a POC or a test driving. Actually, running in UK, uh, the Babylon has about 10% of people in UK. Imagine apply the same techniques for the government, healthcare, education, and no profit organization. It's the same concept of Rubik's Cube. It's just a different way. And the solutions also has been deployed in Africa because many areas in Africa don't have uh, access to the healthcare and they're using the same thing. Let's move forward. And now I'd like to stop the examples to say that Dr. Ali did just to one customer. We have tens of thousands of customers running machine learning today in different areas like government, like in financial industry, retail, and so on. Machine learning is everywhere. Uh, and our mission as an Amazon is put the machine learning in the hands of everybody. Because you don't believe that data scientists must be the only one using this kind of technology. And you understand that as soon as all the developer has access to the same solution, the scale, and the society will be able to leverage this kind of solution much better. And in order to organize those things, I'm also organized in three different categories. Let's cover each one. The first one is framework and infrastructure. This category is, is uh, address some data scientist needs that they can really go to do really advanced things because they have flexibility to use technology like TensorFlow, MXNet, Keras, Gluon. It's just some frameworks available in a machine learning space that can develop your code. Not only the frameworks, but also the computer power using uh, uh, computers like GPU and CPU in order to deploy those things. But like any kind of specialist, you never have enough. We said that we create a second layer, we call it a platform services that provides automation in the process that I just showed you just some minutes ago. Automation for building the model, automation to learn the model, and automation to deploy your model in production. And then other customers just told us like, hey, I don't want to develop the model. I just want to use the model only. And then you have application services, which is based the models and data that Amazon did for you and exposed to you like an API. You don't need to have a data scientist knowledge. You just need to know how to code, how to call APIs, and you see results in some public domains, which includes vision, speech, and language. What we are doing now is try to see those examples for real and see how it works. Now it's time to play. Now it's time to play the service and see how the service is working in a real life. So I'd like to start by documents because especially in government, almost all organizations are document intensive. And the question is, how can I provide a better way to work in documents to provide some insights? Let's go to the theory. So to work in documents, you can work with something that you call NLP, or Natural Language Processing. The idea of NLP is basically you have a text, like this one, and like you are doing now, we try to identify the most relevant parts of your text, like this one. Amazon.com is an important part of this information because it tells who is the owner of this context. Seattle, the city, have dates, you have our customers' books. And what machine learning does with NLP is just try to segment, create segmentations, bring things like name entities, because you know that Amazon.com is organization, which means that you can add more information on top of the source of information. You know dates as well. You know some key phrases from the sentence. You do it naturally, and machine learning and natural language processing can provide it for you. 
also you are able to bring it the sentiment. In this case, it's a positive, and clear is a positive, but you can see here, our customers love, have some strong, strong evidence that's a positive message. Language as well, because sometimes you can receive a text, for example, in French, and maybe you can invoke a service to translate this document, or the other way around. So are the possibilities that natural language processing gives to you. Uh, and the service responsible for that is an application uh, layer we call as a comprehend, able to identify all these texts. Before going to any more theory, let's provide one real case and real example. Let's say that you have a documents, and let's say that we are a police. I would like to talk a lot about law enforcement. You have some document like this one, the Police Department Crime Report, a fake, fake document here. You have a lot of important information here, like dates, you have the name of the people, but you know what? It's not this information which is important. It's important, it's that one. It's a crime information. The description of what happened. The problem is, what you have here is a free text that as a humans or the, the police departments, they need to, the agents need to read one by one in order to start to create a relationship. The point is, can I do it better? Can I do it in a way that machine can do for us in order to scale? The answer is yes. I will just copy the first paragraph. I could do everything, but just the first paragraph, paragraph to able to show you the results. And let's do this analysis in a real time. So what your application you do is something like that. Uh, indicate, okay, I want to use the comprehend. And your application will invoke an API sending the information that you want. So what I'm doing here is the browser, but your application will do it. I will have an API, I will send the text, and I am expecting the results. So as soon as you made a call in an API, you receive these results here. So here, I ask for entities, entities here, and then the results, uh, this, Text is a date. For you, it's easy, because you can identify it. For computers, you need to train to get the results. Here, you have like a, a name, Janice Ruiz. Who is this person? I don't know yet. I uh, have address here, the location. See, for each category, I have the information. Pfizer, Pfizer the name of the company, chemistry. So we have all this information here. Uh, and then, you can go to the key phrases. Let's provide more context. We, where are our key phrases in this sentence? Uh, here, dates, and now, James Rees is an officer, officer who wrote this document. Then you have the address, then you have a relevant information here. It's, what's the problem? It's a kidnapping case. So a major organization receive tons of tons of documents and automatically classify all those documents depends on the context is exactly what Comprehend can do for you. And as a result, in that case, you just can save it as a metadata in your database or any kind of analysis that you can do. At this moment, I will stop here and you go back soon to tell more about this demo. But now we have the analysis. But there's a, a, there's a, a, a quote from Fei-Fei Lee. Lee. She's a, a researcher at Stanford, and she said, if you want machines to think, we need to teach them to see. Because if computer vision is such an important area when you think about machine learning. Uh, and how computer vision works, which is, by the way, different than how comp uh, natural language processing works. In this case, you have a picture, and you immediately look at that and say, hey, there's a baby. But it's not how machine works. The machine will look at, okay, I have one picture, and I want to identify some labels. Which labels? For example, one face. I know that's a human. If I know it's human, means that there's an age behind. And I'm able to calculate the age based on the way that you have the face. So for a computer, we have a, a face detected in between zero and two years old. But sometimes we have different business questions. And for the business question is, how many people do I have 
in this picture, just different question. Again, you can look that and start counting the faces. Computer can do exactly the same. So in that case, you have 10 faces detected. But computer vision is not only about faces. Actually, you can identify some objects in an image as well. So in that case, what I have? I have a person, for sure, and I know that this person is, is playing snowboarding. You see? And now we have the confidence level that I showed you before, which says, like, as a computer, I know for 99.2% there's a person there, and I know with high level of confidence, 98.1%, they are playing snowboarding. It's how computer vision works. And the service in Amazon that can do it is Amazon Recognition. So Amazon Recognition is focused on how to provide different features in terms of image, which includes object and scene detection, the one that I showed you before, as well as facial analysis. Or, for example, if you have an image with text, recognition is also able to detect those texts for you as well. Uh, face and search, identify celebrities, or identify unsafe images, or videos. It's the, how recognition works. Uh, let I show you before and I comprehend. Let's do the same exercise uh, with recognition. Going back to our use case, let's say that we have a different group of agents doing some investigation, and then they just find this picture. They just, just you understand. We have a group that was working a kidnapping case, and we have this group that was working in a totally different. Uh, case, criminal case. And they were looking for someone like Alexander. And they found this picture. Is this guy Alexander? We don't know yet. So it's time to go to check uh, this information. When you use recognition, you have the API for facial analysis. This is one of the APIs that I mentioned during the PowerPoint presentation. And what your application you do basically is first, you need to, your application needs to upload or send the image to Amazon. So in that case, I have my image here, the same image. And as soon as I send, the analysis process is restart behind the scenes to provide the analysis that you need. So in that case, we have three faces. And it's interesting because it's my personal uh, picture. And when I received the results, I was surprised because, hey, I was waiting two faces, but there's a third one in the back. You see? Is the, uh, the algorithm that they provide to us. Not only provide the faces, but also things like age, smiling, if you are happy or not. For example, in my case, yes, I have 44 years old. It's right. You see? It's right. I'm not showing it to my wife, otherwise I have a problem at home. You see? But it's how uh, the recognition works. And like, Comprehend, it's the same idea here. I send a request and I receive a response in a format that you call as a JSON format, which is a very popular data format when you think about applications. As a result, the application just needs to receive this data and do whatever you want to do, which makes sense for your use case. But in that case specifically, I'd like to work in something more uh, meaningful in terms of business case. And one of our customers, International Center for Missing and Exploited Children, they just uh, provide to us uh, the database for tests. Unfortunately, this data that you see now is real. But let's say that I try to investigate to find some criminals or some people who are missing. And remember, my case about Alexander. When I put Alexander here, the name of the person, and just going there to my search mechanism, I receive a lot of pictures. But when I look these pictures, none of them is Alexander. Means that as an investigator, I'm not going in the right place, because there's no connection. What I can do, okay, let's do the analysis in a different way. Let's put as an argument uh, one picture, the one that I showed you before because it's a picture that the investigators found uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a scene, in a crime. And then when you start to do the analysis, doing the search, 
go into the database to do the queries, analyze, hey, do I have these two people? They found one, which, by the way, is me. And in this case here, in, my, in our hypothetical situation, it's me and this person is missing. And more than it, and now it's for me, is a game changer for government. I will be able to link in a, click in a link, RCMP, and establish a connection with the team who was working in a different case. You see, one part of the team was working a text, report the case, another was working a different crime, and they, they are just together because machine learning brought this connection for you. See, when things start to integrate and become just natural and provide you the performance. And I use the image a couple of times to prove the concept, but also can use a video. For example, I just clean here. Video, let's say that you have some CCTV cameras at the airports, for example. You see at my face here, there's a, a green box, we call it a, a, a balding boxes, that try to figure out where I am in terms of picture. So I'm here, capture the information, and then the same result. So it doesn't matter if image or video, in a both case, recognition can help you in terms of identifying the information. It's just one example. There's many others that you can implement if you want to. Going back to the presentation. Let's see more. And now I'd like to do something more advanced, like in a two case, I use the application services layer that uh, you just consume this model as an API, but let's say that you have something specific that you need to create the model, the, all the steps. How can you do it? There's some ways you do, to do it in Amazon, and one of them is SageMaker. SageMaker is a managed service that helps you with all the flow, all the steps to create your model, use machine learning. Uh, it comes as no surprise, we have a three uh, steps, building, the, the step that you build the model, train the model, and host the model. Let's see each one to see in real life. And now it's about code. I'm sorry if you don't code, don't problem, it's more about to see things working, it's more about to see the concepts. Uh, but to code, you need some IGE or some area to develop your code. In SageMaker, you have several options that you can use. You can use Jupyter. It's probably one of the most famous uh, user interface in the data science space. You can use other uh, frameworks like Spark. So it means that you can use big data to invoke calls in machine learning. Is that the idea of Spark? Or you can use the console, the one that I use very, very soon. Or you can use just your computer as an interface to write all those models. Let's go to one model. Now I'm going to SageMaker, different service. Again, about law enforcement. And you have these three stages here. Notebook, development, training, and inference. When you go to notebook, you are able to click here and create your notebook, which means that you have not only the user interface, but all the libraries that you need to develop your own model. I have one that deployed before. And then you just receive the Jupyter uh, interface. It's the area that many data, data scientists can use to develop your code. So I have here Ottawa, Ottawa Summit. And my goal now is predict where the next crime will be. Because now you have the crime, you have the person, you have connection, and it's about what's the next step of the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the criminal. What happened next? So as a part of your code, you are able to work with different libraries. In that case, I'm using Pandas. It's a very popular library uh, for machine learning. And then I, I do what you call it as a data exploratory. In data exploratory, the idea is you as a data scientist to like to research more about the data, to see, understand the behavior of your data. In, your, in our case here, oops. Yes, oof. I have no idea why it didn't work the first, but now it's working. 
uh, what you have here, as you can see, it's real. Uh, now we have here the consolidation from different cities. So we have Ottawa here, or Toronto, Mo Montreal, Quebec, and Vancouver. And we have here uh, murder, assault, kidnapping. It's based the information that I have about criminals. Uh, case resolved means sometimes you have to correlate this information. Maybe when you start to resolve so many cases in an area, uh, the criminals will move to different area. I like to track this pattern as well. And then you have here the crime cluster. Imagine a cluster like a region in your map, same showing like uh, where the crime, the crime happened. Uh, the highest number far from the city hall. The idea is the, the smallest number more close to the city hall in order to identify regions. Okay, I have the data. I know that where the crime is. Uh, then sometimes you need to normalize the data. Uh, for example, computer works better with numbers than text. So instead of working with Ottawa, Montreal, Toronto, I like to work with numbers. So it's the kind of transformation is very natural and common when you think about machine learning. And then you can use different ways to see the data. As you can see here, I just provide a graph. Number one, two, three, and four is the zones. And what this data is telling me now is based saying that in my data, uh, the suburbs, I have more crimes than downtown. You see, it's the scale that you have. Maybe it's in your data, it will be different, you see. But it's the pattern that I have now to identify, which means that there's a higher probability of next crime you'll be in a suburb. Okay, I have the idea of the data. I learned something based on the past, but I don't have my answer yet. Why I don't have my answer yet? Because I need to go to the training because I want the computer to learn with these patterns. Uh, think about training. AWS provides the environment for you to train uh, in a very scalable way. Uh, what you need to do is just provide the code where your data sets are, and then provide the calculation based on this process. Let's go in back to the notebook to do the training model. Here, I have SageMaker that I'm invoke. My, uh, my code. Here I'm using one of the techniques, k-means. It's a very popular in a statistics model. Now I define the data lake. We had a presentation about data lake, but super important concept when you think about uh, uh, machine learning, whereas you are put all the data. In that case, in this case here, I put the, my, uh, my model and my data all in my data leg, have a single point of information to save everything. Now I can play the information, say, hey, I'd like to provide some data to test, or I'd like to cross the data. I can do different techniques here. And then the most important part is this one, fit. What fit means is the time, I would say, that the magic happens. Because basically what I'm doing now with this one single line of command, invoking the algorithm to get the data about the criminals and start to learn based on this uh, learning strategy, the k-means. Which means that after the end, the, my module know how to predict where the crime is or where the next crime will be. If you go back to SageMaker, you see that now I have a training jobs and you see that I'm just processing information. If I click here, we are able to see in your model where uh, your information is, the inputs of your data. In this case, using our service we call as S3, our storage service, as well as output data when I just record all the results of my models. Okay. Now going to the hosting, because now in my model is just training now based on my data. You take about two to three minutes to finish the step before, later. Uh, and then I like to deploy it. And this step is crucial important. Why? Because I have no idea how many times I spoke with data scientists and they just create some amazing models. But when I try to move to the production, it doesn't work. Why? So slow, different techniques. Because when you think about production, is you need to use techniques like DevOps. 
to deploy things in production, to create a high scalable environment, to have a load balancing. Those things are things that sound natural, natural for someone who comes from the application side, but not that natural for data scientists. So what we have here now is just how to copy your model to a production environment in order to scale in a way that you don't need to worry about how many servers you have. Uh, and then we have so we can do it by click. You can do it by you can do it by uh, uh, code as well. I'm just going back to my model. And then here, again, a single line of code embedded in your environment. Just say, hey, I'd like to create a machine, and like to take the model that was created before, and then deploy it in the production. I've cured k means uh, is a one example only. You have much more. For example, if you think about fraud, you have algorithms like XGBoost, linear modern forecasting, works so well for use cases like fraud. Uh, k means was the one that I used to fix this solution. We have image classification. Let's say that you are in a healthcare space and you need to read some MRI images or X ray images. Depends. You can use convolutional network. If you have some translation issue, you can use sec to sec or if you want to find some anomaly, you have handle cut forest. Are examples of algorithms that are available on SageMaker. And our commitment is always bring you more to make your job easier. But you know what? Sometimes you have your model and let's say that you have something that's not available in Amazon, there's no problem at all. You can create your model with your environment. Just need to create a, a Docker container, and you can push this Docker container to SageMaker. And you'll be able to use all the resources that I just mentioned to you now. Meaning that if you want to use AWS resources, you are fine. But if you want to use something totally unique, different, you also can do it so. Uh, and the last part, the inference. This inference will be very similar on the thing that I present to you before, because basically it's about, I have an API, and that API is exposed, I just need to call this API. The only difference is, in the previous examples, I show you the final result, now I like to show the code to invoke one inference or an API. Go back here, it's my model, deploy, here I have inference, this one, this piece of code, just invoke the prediction, saying, hey, I have a date, uh, it's about Ottawa, I want to predict the next crime in Ottawa. Invoke the prediction, and then as a result, receive something like that. Okay, in Ottawa, the next crime will be a kidnapping, and maybe you can relate, oh, now maybe I can find the person who is missing. Uh, the last uh, crime was in a cluster number four, fine. I don't need machine learning to do that. But then now, the closest cluster, the next one, will be cluster number two, which is interesting because our pattern that you learn it is more in suburb, the higher the chance of having uh, the kidnapping. But for this context in Ottawa, for some reason that you don't know, you'll be the opposite. Like, you have some chance to identify these guys. I just need to plot the data. And for your business users, what do you see? You have something like that. They don't even know that's machine learning behind the scenes. They'll say, okay, where's the next crime is in this region? May I predict the street for this data that I have? Not, because it's very specific. But for the region, that area, I know that next crime, you'll be very close here. And by the way, it's much, much easier to send the police officer to cover this area instead of cover all the area. You see, it's a, literally is a game changer in terms of possibilities when you use machine learning. But what many customers have been told us is, okay, but sometimes I don't have internet. Sometimes I need to work offline. Sometimes I need to work in a different way without connection to the cloud. Can I do it? Yes. And there are several ways that you can do it. 
uh, I just show you one example. Using one device, we call it Deep Lens. <coughs> Deep Lens is our uh, camera, but not a regular camera, a camera that you can embed it all the machine learning functions, which means that you can have your model and deploy it in offline mode without the internet. It's the idea. How to work behind the scenes, in this case specifically, is working with image recognition or compu computer vision. We have a scene, we detect the scene, then the device will be able to have what we call as a, a lambda functions, Think about microservices that you have embedded, but instead of running in a cloud, you have these services running locally, and then they invoke the model. More that you just move this model to the device. And then they process things locally, and optionally, this device can talk with the internet to send data or not. Depends on your use case. Let's do it. I have a deep lens here. It's my device. Uh, and then I'd like to go to the console to show you the process. I have projects here. Basically, I have four projects that I'm working on in Deep Lens. If you want to, as soon as you finish your model, doing things that I just show you, just click here and deploy the device. Means that you move the model that was trained to here to the device. I did it before. I just connect physically the device. Now, just not sure if you notice, I'm using local IP. I'm not going to the internet anymore. And here, I have the camera to identify things. If I just change to my face, here we are without internet. So what's happening now is just identify people. Uh, in that case, I'm just providing people. I'm not linking with the database. But as you can imagine, to connect with database, it would not be a, such a hard activity. Now I move to the audience. If you don't want to, I will move for you, Manu. <laughs> I don't have problems with you specifically. Just come a little bit closer, if you don't mind. Just stand up, yeah, closer. Here we are. You see, it's the idea. It's running in real time, not going to internet. The algorithm is here, and identify all those people. In that case, my code is just working in a, in a short distance. But if I change the code, if you probably see the presentation soon, I try to map everybody. See, because it depends on your code. That doesn't depend on the device. And again, just reinforce. I'm talking about a device working offline. That said, the idea was showing you the most relevant services. And now I'd like to invite Manu to come here. And I said Manu is a manager of an analytics team. And then I'd like to share with us how he has been using the same kind of technology uh, in a Ministry of Economic Development. Manu, it's all yours. Thank you very much, Alex. Glad to be here. Thank you very much, everybody. Hope everybody is enjoying the sessions today. I have had an interesting challenge uh, in my current role, and I had to build a team to leverage AI and build POCs around there. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the challenges I was facing. So to give you a little bit of context around who I am and what I was doing. So I'm one of the 20 ministries within the province of Ontario. And the team was built in May 2018, so it's only about five or six months old. And we had to leverage AI and machine learning. What we decided to do was focus on unstructured data, so text, reports, and all those things that uh, come with it. And we built a very small team, about four people. So I hired within two weeks to start the work in June. So the first proof of concept was built within a month. And then we have, over the months, have refined it to seven different proof of concepts. And what made it challenging and what made it fun is what I'm going to talk about and also give you a short demo to, with the tools that Alex has helped me or has, uh, as that he has shown us. So these are the challenges we were facing, which you can relate to some as well. There's a lot of time being spent on searching information. 
there's a lot of tasks that pe people are getting strained with, our employees, and there are many folders with a lot of information. So we wanted to leverage AI, and these tools were going to help minimize the work time that was being spent. Yes, you could build these tools with current technologies that are out there, you can program everything, but we wanted to leverage cloud. And that's where Amazon came into the picture and all their sales team. So one of the guys we reached out to before I even started building the team was named David Eskenazi. He's a guy, I don't know if he's in the crowd though, but right there at the back. Very good guy and you should reach out to him if you have any projects that you're trying to build. Very customer focused, customer centric. And he was trying to explain to me all the tools that are available in Amazon all the capabilities that have been done with other customers, and how I could do something very quickly. I didn't buy, buy that idea in the beginning. But over time, as we started getting familiar with the tools, as Alex has now pointed out, there's a lot of them. If you know basic programming, you can build them very quickly. And that was the beauty of these tools that were, we were using. And what we did was we built everything in Python. So some stuff that uh, Alex was pointing out. And then we were linking different pieces in Amazon. And what I always uh, give an analogy to other people is like Lego. You have different pieces and you can connect either to make a dinosaur, you can make a car, you can make a big building. And what we did use all these different pieces. And here I mentioned translate and comprehend. We also built Lex uh, about the other POCs to build a chatbot. And these tools helped you to build a tool for text analyzing text analysis, and the other ones we had built was the chatbots. And I'm going to do a short demo, um, and the next steps, okay. I think it's this one. So again, we are taking any information that's out there. So what I generally do is pick an article that is out there. So let's say we want to search something on cannab cannabis, I can't spell cannabis legalization. So if you go into Google, we want to analyze a document. In the news, it will be very trivial because it gives you an, uh, information which is very short list of, uh, it's a short document, but this tool works with 600 pages of documents as well. Say we want to analyze this report. You select. Clearly not a Mac user. Yeah. <laughs> I got the Windows user. So. <laughs> OK. Yeah. So, yes. so just select the article. Or you can just do Control A, I think. Command, okay. Command C. Commands. Oh, no, the whole article, though. Like the whole article goes down. Can I do Control A, Command A? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So Command A, con Command C. We go into the tool, we go there, into the text box, command V, paste it there, and we want to analyze the report itself. So we built a few set of tools in terms of analyzing the data. The first one is called basic analysis. It will take the information, provide you information about high level statistics on that, so the metadata about the report. And then it builds, a simple word cloud that you can do. Nothing too fancy here. It gives you a high level stats. Yes, if your executives want to know a high level about the data, it gives you information. But what you want to know is to get the topic modeling, which is what the names and entities finder we were talking about. So you want to talk about people, places, organization, and what doesn't fall into these buckets, you want to call it other. This is still the starting point where we want to go towards the machine learning components. But if you start looking at the people that it has been identifying in these topics, some places that are being mentioned. See, we were talking about cannabis legalization in Canada, and it is picking up other countries as well. So the organizations that are coming up and the other topics. What we wanted to do next was to get Topic Finder, and this is where we wanted to start using artificial intelligence. So we wanted to do, get information about Ontario. We picked up articles on Africa, innovation, uh, energy, uh, legalization. And we click on Submit here. This is creating the topic. It's picking up each sentence where this topic is related to. I mean, in this case, it didn't pick up stuff on innovation, energy, or legalization, but there were two articles related to that. Now, if you're thinking about a document that is 600 pages long, it, does, it gets really helpful. 
And some other pieces that we ended up building was sentiment analysis. And this takes into the tone of the article. So it's taking word by word the sentences and trying to use Amazon Comprehend here to give you the information on how the words are or how the article is built. So it has three sentences that have a negative tone to it. One has a little bit of positive tone to it and then the rest being neutral. In some of the articles that we had tested, they had be, had a negative tone to it, especially at the time when the legalization was going on. This is what the tone was going on. Using the other tools, Amazon Translate, we built the Translate in English. But again, this article is in English, so it doesn't matter. But it still works to complete uh, the paradigm. And then the other two pieces that we are testing are the compare text and key idea. So if you want to compare two articles, what is a Globe and Mail talking versus uh, the Toronto Star, and what are the key ideas in those two documents so that you can create a Venn diagram. That's something we can do as well. Again, very trivial in this news article, but if you're talking about 600-page documents or two contracts that your legal teams are using, then it gives you a very good picture and good insights about these reports. In terms of the next steps, we are trying to build the machine learning components, as Alex was pointing out. We are trying to create into an auto pull from Active Directory, so it's folders that we have internally. So we search for something on cannabis legalization about the articles uh, from the news, but you want to pull data from your internal servers, so that has a confidential and private information. So you want to compare whether you have captured these news reports and whether you have already built your briefing notes around there. This is something we are trying to do. And then lastly, with the Lex, we are trying to connect with the chatbot. So that's my big paradigm, and then again, helps. thanks to the Amazon team, David, Fabrizio, and Alex, and James. They have been helping us a lot, giving us technical guidance, so it has been helping us achieve all these within the last four months. Good, thank you. Thank you. Good. Thanks. To finish our presentation, the architecture again, you see you have several options you can use APIs, as Manu, Manu mentioned here, uh, as a possibility to improve your service and then get most of this kind of service. You can use platforms as a service if you have skills about how to write machine learning models, or if you have something specific, you can go very low level to write your code. For that said, thank you so much for staying with us all day long. It was really a pleasure talking to you guys. Please, we are always looking forward for your feedback. Is this session here to eternally building the organization of the future? If you provide us your feedback, we would really appreciate it. My Twitter is here, our hashtags. If you want to publish on Twitter, feel free to do so. Thanks so much. <laughs>